This uh, video is part number five, I believe, on a series on uh, Wandsview uh, IP cams. I definitely recommend watching the first videos or you're going to be a little lost. Uh, there should be a link in the description or on the screen in annotation for the full playlist. Right now I'm using Telnet because Telnet was originally installed on this device and I have a root shell. And the problem with this is if anyone's stiff in the network, they're going to see every single thing, every single key I press in here, they're going to see. Uh, and everything, all the output. So it definitely be better if we could do this securely, encrypted. So the way we'd normally do that with is SSH, which is not installed on here, but luckily there is a program called Drop Bear, which is a very lightweight SSH, both server and client. And that's actually a pretty new, neat little tool. And it's also rather small. Um, I think it's a half a megabyte. We'll find out here in a minute. So bring that up. If you remember from the previous tutorials, there's not a whole lot of storage space on here. If we mount, you can see listed here uh, different mount uh, drives that are mounted. If we do our df-h, oh sorry, using our busybox that we installed the other day in our temp folder, busybox, and then I'll do df-h, uh, you can see that there's really no room left on any of these drives. They're pretty much full. But as we can see up here, we have a few RAM disks, the VAR folder, the Etsy folder, the temp folder, the media folder are all RAM disks. So we've been working inside our temp folder. Let's just check how much space we have free. So I'm just going to type in free and right here we can see our free spaces. Well, it's just over three megabytes at this point. Some stuff I've added here, you might you know might vary a little bit, but definitely enough room to get an SSH server slash client running on this. Control L, I'll clear the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into my temp folder and list out here. You can see this is where we're working from, and I actually have some residual things I did not remove after testing this. So let me remove this and this. There we go, because we're going to be creating those right now. So I'll list out again. We have our busy box here, and that's what we're going to use to download our SSH server. So just to save time, I'm going to copy and paste this command here. So we're using our new version of BusyBox because the default one on the system doesn't have wget, and we're using a wget command from that BusyBox to download this file. And what this is, it's just a website that has some uh, pre-compiled binary files for you in different formats, and we need the MIPSL one because that's the type of processor we're running. So this link will be, if you look in the description of this video, there should be a link to something that says either video notes or show notes or project notes. All of what we're doing today and what we've done in previous tutorials should be in those notes. Go ahead and click on that and this link will be in there. But we're going to download it and then we can see we got dash capital O and we're going to put it in drop bear multi. So I'll hit enter and it's not very big at all. And in fact, if I list everything out now, let's use our busy box that we just uh, added here so I can use the dash H to get things in human readable format. We can see right here that drop bear multi is, yeah, like half a megabyte. So not very big at all, so perfect. And now we just need to initiate it. So first thing we need to do is make it executable, change mod plus X, our drop bear multiple, multi the screen again just to keep things up here for you. Now, I guess I shouldn't clear the screen that fast. You guys want to see what I'm typing, but we're going to link a number of things. So we're going to use the ln-s, do a symbolic link to the multi, uh, drop bear multi. And now drop bear multi, uh, it's binary, can tell what you've linked to it when you're running it and it will act differently. Basically, it's multiple programs put into one. So we definitely want it to run as drop bear key. We also want it to run as drop bear. We also want it to run as a DB client and also as an SSH client and SCP. And I'll explain all that in a minute, but I'm going to start the next step because it takes a little while. I'm going to say make directory and in etc I'm going to do drop bear. So I just create a new folder. I'm going to move into that folder. And then using the drop bear multi that we just uh, installed, but using the link we created to it. So when we run this command, it's running this program, but it knows to run as the key generator. So we need to create some keys for um, our server to use so that, you know, 
we can do things securely. So I'm going to say RSA host key. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. So that's going to take a little bit. Basically, we're in this. Oh no, I'm in the wrong folder. Control C to stop that. Let's. Uh, okay, we want to be in Etsy. Drop bear. There we go. Okay, up arrow a few times. Now run that command. Glad I noticed that. Two types of keys you can use. You can read about it on yourself. There's the RSA and the DSS types of keys. DSS, I guess, is a little bit quicker on generating. I really don't know all the differences. We're going to generate keys for both, but we're generating a key called this, and we're putting it in this folder, and we're going to create one called the same thing, only instead of RSA, it's going to be DSS. So that when we start our server and a computer connects, it can share that key, and that's how the encryption happens. Takes a little while to generate, as you can see, but let's talk more about this multi up here. As you can see, we're running this program down here, and it's linking to that, but because we're calling it as this, it knows that it's the key generator. When we start our server in a moment, we're going to be running it as drop bear. After that, we can also use it as a client. So if I wanted to connect to my desktop or any other server out there running SSH, I can just type SSH just as I would on my desktop and connect to it. And we've also linked it to SCP. So if I wanted to copy files to and from uh, the camera, I can do so encrypted using SCP. Okay, so now I'm going to run basically the same command, but instead of RSS, we're going to say DSS. And again, it's just a different type of key. And this one generates a little bit faster. But once our keys are generated, we can then start our drop bear server. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split my screen. Now on the top here is we're logged in through Telnet to the IP cam. And down here is my desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in nmap and I'm going to scan the camera. And as you can see, Telnet's open. Port 80 is open, which is the HTTP server, which you use to interact with the camera through your web browser. Port 8600 is an, normally an asterisk port. I'm not sure asterisks, you know, for phone use, VoIP stuff. I'm not sure why the camera has that port open. I haven't gotten that far into inspecting it yet. But you'll notice that port 22 is not open. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say temp, because that's where our bear drop or our drop bear is. I'm going to say drop bear, and I'm going to say start. Okay. So we've started it, and actually if I PSAUX to see all processes and I can grep for drop, you can see, ignoring the command I just ran of grep, that our server is running. And if I, on my desktop down here, here at the screen, scan that, SSH is now open on port 22, and I can SSH root at and the IP address, uh, 9. And give it a second here. The camera is not the fastest. It's my first time connecting. I'm going to say yes. That's using the RSA key that we generated. And I can type in the password that I've created for the root account. And there I am. I'm logged in. So right now, bottom screen SSH, top screen Telnet. As far as user interfaces right now, they both can do the same thing. I can move to the root directory and list things out, and I can move to the root directory down here and list things out. Really not much of a difference, but the bottom screen here, everything is completely encrypted, so no one will see. So right up here, I'm typing, I type ls and hit enter. Anyone sniffing the network's gonna see that I sent the ls command and this is the output. It's in plain text. Down here, they'll just get a bunch of garbly gook uh, encrypted stuff, and since they don't have our keys, they can't decrypt it, theoretically. Um, and that is it. So now you could disable the Telnet. The only problem with this is the way we installed it, we installed it to the temp folder, which as we said was a RAM uh, file system. So when the camera reboots, it's gonna all get wiped out. Our keys will still be there, I think. Um, mount. No, Etsy is a RAM file system too, so our keys and everything will get wiped out next time the camera restarts, whether it's power surge, you click the restart button, or you unplug it and plug it back in. All these changes we just made will go away. And the reason we did it in this folder is just because that's where space. Now you could clear out stuff, like I said, it's, it's a half a megabyte. Uh, you might be able to, again, 
temp busy box df dash h here's some partitions yeah. there's if you clear out a little bit on the system you might be able to get the ssh server on there you're going to be really maxing out that that partition there um, so theoretically you could get ssh on here running full time uh, i'm really not sure how big the telnet server is um, if you could clear that out let me see something I'm just theorizing here well tell that's part of busybox and busybox you're gonna need on there and our copy of busybox is definitely way too big so yeah you might be able to clear something out on that partition and make space but the whole partition in itself is only three megabytes and we have a half a megabyte left which is like I said about the size of, of, of drop bear so theoretically you could get SSH running on this full-time even after reboots with some cleaning up uh, right now I'm just running it in server luckily you know I'm, I'm accessing this all on my local network which is secure and I also kind of live out in the middle of nowhere so there's no real houses around me I'm not too concerned about using telnet on my local server and if I was someplace else I would actually tunnel in through SSH on uh, another computer I have running on my network and then go to it so I'm going to mainly be using Telnet but I thought I would show you this for multiple reasons one maybe you want to make sure you can SSH into this camera for security reasons two this you know same process will work on many devices you know you just have to get the right compile for your processor type this is MIPSL so I download the MIPSL um, version, I hope that's how you say it, MIPSL. Um, but that's how you get SSH running on that camera, both client and server. And again, we also have SCP, if I temp SCP, and I should be able to copy files back and forth from any SSH computer to this computer, or to the camera, that is. Anyway, I thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that you have a great day. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Again, there's a link to that in the description, as well as notes that should show you everything we've done today and in the previous uh, videos in this series. And I just hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night, we work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.